In the days leading up to the Iowa Democratic caucuses, most eyes are on Bernie Sanders and Hillary Clinton. Who is going to win? But in the end, it might actually be Martin O'Malley who proves crucial. Not by him actually winning, but by who his supporters end up going for. And the reason for that is that the caucuses are run in a sort of weird, arcane, esoteric fashion that I didn't even know about prior to today, but I'm very interested in this news. Because unlike the Republican caucuses, where all votes are counted equally, the Democrats' Iowa caucuses are more complex. Caucus goers gather in groups for each candidate during a 30-minute alignment period. If a group does not reach the 15% threshold, a group there being a group who supports one candidate, its members must realign with a different candidate or sit out the final headcount. Now, most O'Malley supporters will be ruled non-viable if he does not get 15% support at a caucus. His supporters will then be up for grabs by another candidate. We're going to show you the graphs soon of, of how likely it is that he reaches that threshold. Spoiler alert, not very likely. And so this is not simply like interesting political history. This is going to be relevant in the next week or two. Because if he gets three points or five points or seven points, those might end up becoming Hillary or Bernie's three, five or seven points. And the race is within that in a lot of the polls that you see. I find, you know, what's funny is like, uh, how many people don't know that's how the Iowa caucuses work? Of course, we know. I've known it for years. But, uh, <laughs> you didn't tell me until today? <laughs> I was kidding. But uh, that is, that, so now they're going after, how do you attack a Martin O'Malley voter? How do you get that person, right? Mm. What do you, what would, it seems like if you're a Martin O'Malley voter, you have to find them first. you're going to go towards, Clint. yeah, you have to first find them. Yeah. Ouch. It's going to be the first struggle. That's, funny. But they maybe That's not how you get them with That's talk correct. like that. Yeah. Yeah. They're, yeah. they're going to show up at the caucus, pardon my French, and um, so that you get, but so I think that a O'Malley voter would be a natural Clinton voter, right? right. Because he's he so seems anyway so establishment, right. and mm. she would be. So it would be weird for an O'Malley voter to go towards Bernie. I think that they're going to break towards <clears throat> Clinton, right? What do you think? Again, for me, the struggle is trying to find one. I uh, <laughs> I, I remember what was it that that campaign uh, stop he did where one guy came. Yeah, and he was like, I'm I not even really an O'Malley supporter. He's like, I'm just kind of here. Like <laughs> that's sad. right. Like well, home. There was a storm. In, yeah, the, the, yeah. in O'Malley's defense, there was a storm. One guy did show up and he hung yeah, out. There yeah, was, there was a storm. There was a fair. storm, and it, but it was just like the guy wasn't even really an O'Malley supporter. I feel like O'Malley is sort of like the Clinton, like what Clinton was in the 08 uh, election now. It's just sort of like, it's over. Just stop. Just like you can't. And she was dead set on She's like, no, I'm going to keep going. Mm -hmm. He's like, what if Obama gets murdered? Literally, yeah. which is what she said, yeah. and then it was like, O'Malley, just just stop. Just yeah. it's it's not gonna happen. It's a, not except gonna that happen. at the very least, she had a long period where she was up Viable. by a lot, yeah. and then it was going back and forth. I mean, they were trading primaries for a while. I mean, he never even had his like his moment. He, really, he didn't. He didn't. Yeah. It's not like he lost ground. He just never really had ground. Yeah. I just keep thinking he has like bills to pay or something. Like I don't <laughs> understand. <laughs> he, I can't figure out what is in it. Maybe he doesn't him. like his home life. Right. Like yeah, I have no reason to believe that. <laughs> I apologize. I, I, just, want to I just don't want to be at home. I just need exactly. something to do. He doesn't have anything yeah. to do. He yeah. Went, yeah. Go ahead. I was gonna say. I mean, in, in the last few like debates in the forum that they had, I thought that his performance was admirable. I think he just got sort of, I guess. He, did, he couldn't have known that going in here, there was never really a way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and nobody would, like a year ago, or yeah, about a year ago, nobody would have known because Bernie Sanders wasn't even a consideration right. at that point. If anything, it would have been Biden. And if you, again, I would say his chances against Hillary were always going to be low, but with Hillary, Biden, and him, maybe there's a possibility. They're, they're, they overlap quite a bit on a number of issues. So I, but I do feel. I cover the news almost every day. And I can't tell you what Martin O'Malley stands for or how he's different from Hillary Clinton or right. Bernie Sanders. I can't, really. Off the top of my head, I can't. Yeah. I mean, he is sort of, in, in many ways, sort of splitting the difference between them. His rhetoric is closer to Bernie. His policy right. positions are closer to Hillary. And if you go to their websites, him and Hillary on, on health insurance, on uh, illegal or, uh, immigration, on uh, police reform, I mean, they have very similar policies. I think he says he's only really different. What is it about gun control? I think that's where he says he, there's a difference between... Him and Hillary and Bernie, I think he's, I guess he's saying he's a little more consistent. I feel bad for him. Like, you were talking about the debates. Like, I feel bad. Mm -hmm. He's like that little kid in class that keeps raising his hand and nobody wants nobody to call on him. him. And he's just so hyper and excited. Yeah. And it's 30, just, 30 seconds. 30, 30 seconds. Like, I just, 10 seconds. Me, me. And it's just like, oh, no. Yeah, you feel bad. Yeah, it's just like, oh, no. On, I've been tweeting all these jokes about him throughout the debates. And then I was at South Carolina and he was the only candidate, as is apparently usually the case, to come into the press room afterward. Yeah. I saw him and I was like, I feel bad for all those tweets I sent. Uh, because he seems like a per look. If the if Hillary and, and Bernie weren't there, right. he's not a train wreck no. by any means. No. He's he's a progressive guy. He's got. 
Look, if he's you look no at, Jeb Bush. He's no Jeb Bush. <laughs> Give him a break. Um, if you look at his history in Baltimore, I mean, some of that, I mean, the community has some grievances against him, I think, understandably so. Right. But overall, he's not a terrible guy. But it, this could be, interestingly, one really fast. Let's just put up, you're going to see the breakdown. This is coming from 538. Uh, and so, uh, interestingly, Clinton and Sanders, there's a good amount of overlap there in the, the distributions you're seeing. And O'Malley, there might be a bit of that tail that hits 15%, but right now he's somewhere around 6.7, give or take two or three points. And so, I mean, this Iowa thing is going to happen in terms of the non-viability. And those six points are more than enough for either candidate to swing. I don't know at this point who they're favoring. I can't believe that nobody has actually asked who their second choice is. Yeah. That seems like a dereliction of duty on the part of the pollsters. But I thought that Biden supporters would go for Bernie, and I was yeah. proven wrong. I think I might I might be proven wrong in thinking that Bernie's going to get a lot out of this. Uh, that might that might clinch it for Hillary. I was going to. Do you think that it's like a it's a VP thing that he's staying in to kind of vibe for a be. VP slot? Like I'm not, I because otherwise I can't figure out what on no. earth unless it's the home life thing. Like, I don't I, just, <laughs> I don't see how a, I don't, an that, establishment white guy uh, helps anybody's ticket. Yeah. And this you know and he's not from the South. So he doesn't have right? that. He from, is the Baltimore considered the South? No, I don't. No. I don't so, um, Biden had that going for him. Like yeah, that sort of yeah. Midwestern -y kind of thing. I'll tell you who is wrong is uh, Paul Krugman, who keeps writing these columns about how oh, these everybody who supports Bernie's wrong because the GOP is not going to work with them. You're not going to get what you wanted. <laughs> mm -hmm. So because so apparently the what the mainstream press is saying now about Bernie Sanders is you should vote for Hillary because she's going to try to do less. Yeah, <laughs> and that somehow makes sense to them. Because and she's he, doing less, she'll be more successful. I yeah, guess. and even Sad. in his column today, Paul Krugman said that. Well, you know, people point to FDR, but FDR didn't get half. He only got half the stuff done that he wanted. That's exactly what that's, we're saying. Yeah. That's also a big half. You yeah. have to I was going to say some major stuff. Like, you was, shoot for the moon and then you compromise. You don't right. start at a compromise position, which is the problem people have had with Barack Obama, yeah. is that he continuously starts from the middle of the other guy's position, yes. and then he starts to compromise more. You're supposed to start at Bernie Sanders' position, yeah. FDR's position, and then they go, even... You know, even Social Security, when FDR implemented it, didn't cover everybody. Yeah, you know why? Because he started out, I want to cover everybody. Mm -hmm. And then he negotiated and they compromised to where it, comp it covered who they did cover. So this idea that Krugman is, you, somehow you should vote for Clinton because people won't want to work with Bernie Sanders. As if the GOP is is eager to work with Hillary Clinton. Exactly. They hate her more than Barack Obama. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. They've hated yes. her for 25 fucking Decades. years. They got like a jump years. start on hating her. And yeah. somehow, yeah. but somehow it makes more sense to vote for her because she, Bernie won't be able to get done all the things he says. Who does get the, Barack Obama couldn't get done what he said he was wanted to get done. So we still voted for him. You don't vote for Hillary back then either. You vote for the person who says they're going to do what you want them to do. Yeah. That is craziest. That is the craziest logic. So according to Paul Krugman, we would have been better off as Democrats if we would have voted for Al Smith in the primary <laughs> instead of FDR. Yeah. Because Al Smith well, didn't want to do as much shit as FDR. Yeah. So, But we voted for FDR. Look what happened. We got fucked. Why do no, we have, didn't. Why do you have to bring up Al Smith every show? <laughs> I'm joking. That's uh, there, there's one way that so you're he's wrong, not forgotten. though. He's not forgotten. He's not forgotten at all. He's not forgotten. Uh, there's one area you're wrong. If it's Sanders, then they're going to call him a socialist, which yeah. they have never done with any other Democrat. <laughs> any they other called Democrat. them all Including Barack Obama, who they, they call a Marxist, fascist, Kenyan socialist. They call him a Muslim, a Kenyan, a communist. If he's any of those so things, he's like the worst of each one. Like, you can't <laughs> exactly. be like a beer-drinking, LGBTQ-supporting Muslim. Otherwise, yeah. you just suck as a Muslim. And corporate like, profits can't yeah. rise to record levels under a, fa a socialist, yeah, a Marxist. It's like, yeah. Have, has Paul Krugman never read the comment section at redstate.com? Has he <laughs> never read? The yeah. comment section. I have, and I have. I went after the uh, State of the Union. Prepared. I went to uh, Breitbart.com to yeah. see the comment section under the State of the Union thing they were covering. First comment was, oh, great speech, comrade. They're calling him, <laughs> the first thing they're calling Barack Obama, after seven years of nonstop growth, after the yeah. Wall Street comes back stronger than before, after all this stuff, what, when is this socialism going to kick in that's going to kill our economy? Bless well, I heart. thought that Obamacare was supposed yeah. to crash our economy. It was. We're supposed to lose yeah. jobs. We had 5% unemployment. So, again, this all it's this... It's going to happen the same time he comes for the guns. It's coming. Exactly. Yes. It's, on the it's, way. It's just like baby Jesus. He's at the light, and he'll be there for the guns. <laughs> and the we jobs had, are all going to go away. It's going to happen. You just have to wait. 
Yeah. And we have liberal out. economists, journalists like Paul Krugman telling us to not vote for liberal. That is the crazy, because there's opposition to liberalism, yeah. we have to wait until the Republicans are ready for us to present our liberal ideas. You know when that happened? Fucking never. Yeah. That never happens. Yeah. Do you think that there's something to be said, though, for saying that maybe Bernie is a little more extreme and Hillary maybe is a little more establishment Washington and that she might be able to get maybe some ideas that aren't as extreme as Bernie's uh, a little further because of her ties in Washington than Bernie, who's a, just pretty, pretty extreme. Because I've thought about that myself, that that might be, she may be more effective in Washington because of her history there. That's what people And because say. she's not as extreme. That, that is do you, certain well, here's do you my, think there's an argument for that or not? My response to that is that Bernie, I think, is the number, uh, if you look, he brags about all the legislation he's gotten done with Republicans, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right? Whereas Hillary goes at, at the, in the debate and says her number one enemy is the GOP. Okay. Right? So he brags about working with them. And he's, I think he, I heard this yesterday, I haven't checked it but that uh, he was the number one in amendments as far as a, a Democratic okay. senator getting amendments approved in the last eight years for bills with that with GOP. Yeah. I could be yeah, wrong the about second. that. second. But the fact that, it, this, that, that I've heard that, that oh Hillary because she's more of an insider he's been he's been in Congress since I don't know since the 80s since Eisenhower probably yeah so he's been in <laughs> the dawn of time I mean he yeah. and he gets along everybody gets along with Bernie what they say is I can't be seen working with right. you and that's what they say about Democrats too the GOP right. says I would like to work with you on this but I can't be seen yeah. working with you so you don't so, think Hillary would have like a, a better shot they at, hate Hillary. They, they do hate her. They impeached her husband. Yeah. It, they impeached her husband. And when they knew it was bad for them, they did yeah. it anyway. So you think they're going to be nicer to Bernie? I mean, to her than Bernie? No, that's a good, I mean, a good and point. I think that's that it, it could be the case, but it's not certainly the case. And that's what a lot of people in the media are saying these yeah. days.